Hello, today we're going to be going over the general preventative maintenance and repair of this Gyro GT controller. To start this repair, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a soldering iron. You're going to need solder. Wire cutters. Phillips screwdriver. It screws out from underneath of here. Or could be a flat tip screwdriver, depending on the version. You're also going to need a capacitor, actually two of them, and optionally, probably what you need to do is order new relays as well. A rebuild of this, two capacitors and two relays, the price on that with shipping from DigiKey is $50. So if you're going to do your repair and preventative maintenance yourself, that's what it's going to cost you. It's about $50 to take and change out two relays if there's common issues with activation and or uh, safety issues. If your contacts are pretty dingy looking, you need to take and replace it. By the time that you're watching this video, you're already going to be having issues with this Gyro GT controller. You see how nice and shiny that looks inside? And how dull this looks? So, I can't tell you what a date or how long you should change out these relays. Um, this says 89 to 95. I'm guessing that's from 1989. And I would change this out before 20 years or so has transpired. Okay. Take the screws out of the bottom of the, the uh, case here. I use that as a storage. And you're just gonna set that to the side for now. You can see generally the door controller itself. There can be a few components here that you want to check out and change if you're having issues. So if the controller is completely dead, you have no safety, you have no activation, you can take and check this 8 amp fuse. And if that's not bad, then check this. Check your MOV. I would do this before you actually have to have any issues. Check this MOV. Part number on it is, I believe, a 150, yeah, 150L10. And you can get that from DigiKey as well. Okay. This this relay here, hardly any issues. You can take contact and check it out. If you have a motor controller issue, the motor is, is slamming open, slamming closed. I mean, this is spring fed, or spring closed. Check your diodes here. They should not have a short on them, as in zero ohms. And it should not be less, I would think, than 200 ohms. It should be 300 to 400 ohms minimum. Um, you can replace those with 1N5408. I believe that's what the part number was. You also have this little 33 ohm resistor here that burns up every now and then. As you can see, this has already had been the case. I bought this off of eBay. So I was kind of skeptical on how this was actually going to be repaired in the past. So that resistor there burns up quite often. Sometimes, if your relay do not pull in, you have your voltage here. It can be a bad solder joint and or these little smaller diodes here. Home them out as well. If you don't have your 24 volts going to this socket here for your activation, and uh, your safety circuit, check this bridge. Input should be 120. Output should be, well, it may not be 120. It's going down through the step down transit transformer here. But it, you will get 24 volts or 27 volts, probably, likely 27 volts. We're using this capacitor here to go through and filter the circuit. And you have a large, very large resistor there. If that resistor had burned up and opened up, you also will not have any activation and such. Um, 
The door is clam and closed. Check these resistors here. Usually it's in a set pair. So it's either going to be 20 ohms and 200 ohms or 5 ohms and and uh, I think it's 10 ohms or 10 ohms and 100 ohms. It could be 5 ohms and 50 ohms. I'm not sure exactly. But they're in pair and that's how they are set up. Um, if they are open, then you change them out. And you probably might actually have a motor problem itself. Okay, that's just a general basic to just checking all these. The biggest problem you're going to have with these is cold solder joints. And I can show you a demonstration what a cold solder joint looks like. Um, we will find a couple on here and show you what that looks like. Alright, so we're at the bottom side of the board. And if you look at this standoff right here, you see that half circle. That is actually a bad solder joint. It's a cold solder joint. And that's what's common with these controllers. You can have bad solder joints on your motor circuit here causing issues. Generally, when I rework these things, I am going to take and touch up all the solder with brand new solder. Okay. And since this is an older uh, control box, I will not be using lead free. I will be using leaded solder. Check this part right here. It's this little resistor. You see how that's exposed? Yeah, you shouldn't be saying that. That's a bad solder joint as well. So, again, when you go through this, you want to make sure that you're going to hit solder joints up, make them look nice and pretty. If you don't like all the black brown flux around this, get a toothbrush, get some oven alcohol, and just hit it. Soak the board, and have fun scrubbing. Okay, that's what I'm going to show you. Uh, let's check out the switches and see how well they look. They look okay. And that looks okay over here so far. Power input looks alright. Looks like they blew a trace coming in there. So, and or this could have been modified to have that MOV as well. They may have not had that MOV in begin with, and they modified it. The Gyrotech 22-0105C. I don't know if that's an actual model number of this or not, but I work for a company. It's located in Harmon, Illinois. If you're watching this video and you're in the door control business, you already know what company I worked for in the past. In my opinions and thoughts of door controllers did not reflect my current employer or the people that I've worked for in the past. I'm sharing my knowledge that way you can gain so for yourself. I'm going to take and remove these capacitors here, this three wire capacitor, and I'm going to show you the new capacitors that were installed generally when I worked for this com company in Harmon. When you go to check out the capacitors, you want to make sure you know what direction negative is. Okay, negative is heading towards the relay socket, and negative is actually going towards the board here, too. So keep that in mind when you're taking and removing these. That's what we need the soldering iron for. So we're going to take and remove these. I'm actually going to use a pair of wire cutters. I'm sure you can see how dingy they are. And let's zoom out just a little bit so you can see more of the field. And I'm going to cut this here. And I'm going to cut this here. That way that's gone. And I will remove that solder. And I'm going to... There we go. That's better. Cut that. And I'm going to cut this here. That's just a an anchor. That's all it is. An anchor for the capacitor. Alright, so... This one's first. Um, I'm going to take and heat up one joint. I'm going to pull 
and then we heat up the other joint and push. And essentially that's all it is. So we're just pulling, wait, and let it cool down. And then you're going to get on this side and you're going to push. And you notice that this pad has lifted up and that's common. Same. And that's actually not touching it anymore. So I can take and pretty much just pull this capacitor out. And it should not be connected to anything. And there you have it. Let's do the same for this one over here. It's going to be this solder joint. It's going to be that solder joint. And we're going to do this back and forth until everything's nice and loose. And then that will just pull out as well. Okay. There's two additional things I forgot to tell you that you need to take and get a toothpick. And what we're going to do with the toothpick is you're going to actually heat this solid blob up. And we're going to do like that. I'm going to play acupuncture with the solder blob. Okay? That's what we're doing. And that creates the hole that I need for my solder. I'm going to make this lay flat and do the same. And I'm going to take and uh, let's remove this one leg. And then I'm going to remove the support stud. Okay. So, what I forgot to tell you additionally to a toothpick is that you might need a drill. Because what we're going to do is we're going to drill out a new hole. Unless my new capacitors are fitting properly, we will have to drill out a new hole. You see what I'm doing here? I'm adding solder to this trace here because they had carbonized and you will not actually get good flow from the solder to that resistor. And it could potentially is what caused this transistor to fail because this trace is kind of yucky. And so I'm just adding lead to this. Now this is just a very crappy plumber solder that I got from a local hardware store. I would suggest you getting solder not from a plumber's hardware. Okay. I'm going to just kind of snip this off a little bit. There we go. Now let's talk about the capacitors. You're going to be using a thousand microfarad, 100 volt capacitor. I would get a known brand, Nucheon, with a good brand. Now, what I was used to using in the past was much larger than these. And uh, so it fits in a different hole size. Uh, you can get the part number should be able to see it in the video this here. Part number that. And what you're going to do is what you're going to take and you're going to take and put one leg in a hole. And you're going to describe it. And you're going to do the same thing. Negative side of, the, of this side and you're going to describe it. And the reason so is because you're going to have to take and these... Uh, hole spacings are not accurate for the capacitors that we replace them with. Okay, so what you're going to have to do, especially on this side, is you're going to have to drill a hole, the same size hole, on this side here. And then when you get the capacitor in, you'll probably likely have to drill a hole, this existing hole here, make it bigger. And the same way with here, make a hole over here. And what you're going to do is when you get this new hole in, you're actually going to take and fold this leg here over the trace and solder that there. Same way with this side here. You would take and you drill a hole, preferably up here, 
So you're not near this trace here. And you're not going to be in it anywhere else. So get up here and uh, do your hole. You can do the same way with this side here. You can see where you're at. Okay? Just like that. So that's where you're going to drill your hole. It's right there. That way you know where you're going. Same way with right here. You can take this and you can go like that. And anywhere in the, that range that you're twisting is fine. So you're just going a little hole, a mark, where you're going to drill. So anywhere in this vicinity here, it's going to be fine. I will get closer to the trace if possible. And that's it. You solder those in, put the right orientation where the capacitor is supposed to go, and you're done with those capacitors. And the next step would be to take and install your new relays. There's the part number for it. PB14515 ND. These relays are $16 a piece on DigiKey. Okay. These relays here are $16. These relays are $45. So they are electrically the same and it makes no difference. All right. So that's what your capacitor and your relay preventative maintenance is going to be like. And when you do all these steps, nine out of ten times, you're not going to have any problem with this door controller for at least a good five or six more years, I would say, until your capacitor dries out again. Or you have bad contact on your relay. And that's it. That's all there is to take and repair this control box. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you'd like me to fix this control box itself, send me an email. Let's get in touch. I'm going to be doing these eBay buys, turning around, showing you how to fix them in live version. And then be selling this same control box on eBay in the future. I'll have that video link. So I'll have that link to the eBay in the uh, video description itself. Okay? Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And we'll see you next time.